All right, well, what we got here this time is we got our 1984 F-150 extended cab with a 302 on it. And what we've been having problems with is we've been having problems with a lot of power steering leaks and puddles underneath of the truck. And we're just trying to knock them all down one by one. And on this particular one, we found that our hose has got a nice big old rip in it. And of course... It's a not as spongy as it's supposed to be. So we're going to be going and fetching ourselves a new hose and some new clamps. And we're going to be connecting back into the wannabe cooler that Ford puts in these F-150s for the power steering system. And we're going to be dropping the pump back in. And yeah, I know it's a dirty, greasy, filthy, disgusting mess underneath of here. But this is a work truck and... It gets off of its butt and it goes to work every single day and has since we bought it for a lovely price of under a thousand dollars. Once we get our piece of hose, we'll get back to you and give you a rough in on how to put this thing all back together. Now what I went and did is I went and got two feet of high pressure fuel line to use on our power system power steering system return hose two foot piece of line nowadays cost you about seventy nine dollars and eighty three cents not including tax we also got some clamps to fit the line i wouldn't suggest you get your clamps at any of the auto parts chain stores unless they're really good auto parts chain stores because those chinesium things will let you down every time we get these at the big box hardware store. All right, so as you see, I put the new piece of hose down on the return line, which is Ford's comical belief that it's some kind of a cooler unit for the power steering. I've never really worked my steering hard enough that it overheated, but you know, hey Ford. But uh, put a clamp on there, new piece of hose. You'll notice I pointed the clamp forward so I can get to it after all the rest of this crap goes back into it. That way, if you ever need to tighten it, service it, whatever, you're not fucking yourself. So, always pay attention to where you put your clamps at, kids. Alright, and here's the end of the hose that's going on to the power steering pump return side. And you'll notice once again... Pointed to clamp in the direction I can get to it eventually, even though I'll probably forget that I even put a clamp on it. But hey, yeah, let's do things. Okay, got the power steering pump bolted back in. Don't forget to put in the little special spacer that Ford gives you. Oh wait, I lost that one a long time ago, so I got a big bolt, a big nut in there, okay? And this one on the front, 5 8 one down below it. 13 millimeter because they learned one thing about ford mechanics a long time ago they don't have duplicate tools so you got to make all the bolts different all right so it's back in we're about to fill it back up with fluid uh naturally we're not going to use power steering fluid because uh this thing is older than most people i know and uh we just put good old atf up in there if it's good enough for a transmission, it's good enough for a power steering pump. But uh, do remember one thing. If you got a newer car or something like that, always use the fluid that they tell you to put in there. Because uh, things can go wrong. Things can go bad. And sometimes when you let your son fill the power steering reservoir up, he really overfills it. So our oh, okay. car will be completely undercoated with power steering fluid. Look at that. That's... It's so full, full that it's sickening. Full for hot. Okay. All right, belts back on. Tension. And remember on your older Ford power steering things, you could put a half inch ratchet in there to help you get tension so you get that belt nice and tight and waste the bearings in the water pump and the power steering pump and you pull up on the crankshaft and you wipe your number one main bearing out. So uh, don't do that too tight. <laughs> 